And howdy everyone, welcome to Word Redo number 68. Today we are covering numbers number 19, chapter 19, and numbers 20. That, you know where to read. If you're coming out of Babylon, go to c2kreport.com, sign up for the free classes. That, let's go ahead and pray in. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for everything you've provided for us and for calling us to be your sons and daughters. We ask for you to pour out your spirit of knowledge and understanding on everybody that's here now and in the future so that we get the knowledge and understanding that you need us to have. Uh, please let us go forth being good examples uh, of your children and good representatives uh, of you as we as we interact with everybody within this world. Uh, we ask your prayers, or yeah, your prayers, and your coverings over everyone that's traveling and uh, anybody that is still recuperating from any illness they're recovering from. And also be with those, send your comforter to those that have experienced uh, uh, a loss through, through death. And, uh, well, just Give them, give them your comfort. Thank you, Abba. Bless you. In Jesus, Yeshua's name. Amen. Okay, everybody. Let's go ahead and get rolling on this. Where are we? We are in Numbers 19. And ready, set, go. Numbers 19. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came a yoke. And ye shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh and her blood, with her dung shall he burn. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. And the priest shall wash his clothes and he shall bathe his flesh in water. And afterward, he shall come into the camp and the priest shall be unclean until the even. And he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in water, and bathe his flesh in water, and shall be unclean until the even. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, and lay them up without the camp in a clean place. And it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation. It is a purification for sin. And he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. And it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them for a statute forever. He that toucheth the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. He shall purify himself with it on the third day. And on the seventh day, he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day, he shall not be clean. Whosoever toucheth the dead body of any man that is dead, and purifieth not himself, defileth the tabernacle of the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from Israel, because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him. He shall be unclean, his uncleanness is yet upon him. This is the law when a man dieth in a tent. All that come into the tent, and all that is in the tent, shall be unclean seven days. And every open vessel which hath no covering bound upon it is unclean. And whosoever toucheth one that is slain with a sword in the open fields, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean seven days. And for an unclean person, they shall take of the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification for sin, and running water shall be put thereto in a vessel. And a clean person shall take hyssop, and dip it in the water, and sprinkle it upon the tent, and upon all the vessels, and upon the persons that were there, 
and upon him that touched a bone, or one slain, or one dead, or a grave. And the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day, and on the seventh day. And on the seventh day he shall purify himself and wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and shall be clean at even. But the man that shall be unclean, and shall not purify himself, that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation, because he hath defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of separation hath not been sprinkled upon him. He is unclean. And it shall be a perpetual statute unto them, that he that sprinkleth the water of separation shall wash his clothes, and he that toucheth the water of separation shall be unclean until even. And whatsoever the unclean person toucheth shall be unclean, and the soul that toucheth it shall be unclean until even. Numbers 20. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation into the desert of Zin, in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh. And Miriam died there, and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt, to bring us in unto this evil place? It is no place of seed, or of figs, or of vines, or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Mirabah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. And Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom, Thus saith thy brother Israel, Thou knowest all the travail that hath befallen us, how our fathers went down into Egypt, and we have dwelt in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. And when we cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice, and sent an angel, and hath brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of thy border. Let us pass, I pray thee, through thy country. We will not pass through the fields, or through the vineyards, neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right hand, nor to the left, until we have passed thy borders. And Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come out against thee with the sword. And the children of Israel said unto him, We will go by the highway, and if I and my cattle drink of thy water, then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people, and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage to his border. Wherefore Israel turned away from him. And the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, journeyed from Kadesh, and came unto Mount Or. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in Mount Or, by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, 
because ye rebelled against my word at the water of Mirabah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up unto Mount Or, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son, and Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. And Moses did as the Lord commanded. And they went up into Mount Or in the sight of all the congregation. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eleazar came down from the mount. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned for Aaron 30 days, even all. even all the house of Israel. Okay, let's go back to 19. Shall we? Okay, very short chapters. <clears throat> and this talk, this is where they get the red heifer from. Right? This is why the Edomites that have taken over the Levitical, the claim of the Levitical priesthood, we'll put it that way, uh, are, are so excited for the red heifer. <clears throat> but they're, they're doing everything uh, contrary to this law. And they're doing it for the reasons that this isn't stated. Right? So... It's real interesting. Now, who are those people? They're the ones that we just read about denying Israel passage. Um, but still here on chapter 19, uh, notice that they're going to use these ashes to make a type of, uh, of cleansing water for people that touch dead things and dead people. And it's very strict, too. All right? Look at that. I mean, if somebody dies in a tent and a container of food isn't bound up, covered up, and sealed, it's unclean. Throw that away. No bueno. Don't be eating that. I almost said, it has that disease. Which it could, but... Not the disease we're all familiar with these days. Okay, so now you know why this video got banned. Anyways, as we continue on here, you know, notice that if the person doesn't get purified, they're cut off. You're, you're no longer a part of our people. Get out. People have a hard time with that. I would too if I was unclean. I'd have a hard time with that. Notice how unclean is like cooties too, right? If you touch someone that's unclean, you become unclean. That's not fair. Nobody said it was fair. By your judgment. But all of our Father's judgments are righteous and true. Let's go to 20. Um, man, talk about a, a blurb. Miriam dies in verse 1. And then everybody's complaining that they don't have water. Okay, so... This is where Moses is disobedient, right? In verse 8, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak you unto the rock before their eyes. Speak to it. But no, Moses goes wailing on the rock. Twice. Wham! Wham! And then the water came out anyways.
Interesting. He saw. He says, "Here now, you rebels. We must fetch you. Must we fetch you water out of this rock?" And he's kind of rebelling when he says that. Well, not when he says that, but when he smacks the rock. When he smoteth the rock. Someone needs to make a meme of Moses taking his rod and, and whacking Dwayne Johnson. Okay. So, because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. He's telling them right now, you and Aaron, you guys aren't going into the promised land. And then there's this from verse 14 through 21. Edom, right? Esau is refusing to give Israel, Jacob, passage through his lands to the point that he sends arms, armed troops out. Now, you're going you're gonna to go around. You're not stepping foot on our property. Right? Like brothers. Right? If you step in my half of the room, you're going to feel the wrath of Lego. A Lego sword. I would just like to mention hashtag not sponsored by Lego. Okay. We're not sponsored by anybody, but Yah, our Heavenly Father and his salvation, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. That's who we're sponsored by. Got a problem with it? Then boycott our sponsor. Oh. Don't want to do that. It's actually impossible to do that. Okay, so they go around and then uh, we got the death of Aaron. This is very interesting because he's the high priest. He's told to go up into the mountain, Mount Hor, and Mount Ol, and take off all his priestly garb. And his son, Eleazar, is supposed to put on all the priestly garb. And then Aaron dies. Very interesting. The, the, it sounds like the instant that the garments are stripped off. So, verses complaining or comparing this to verse 1, where Miriam's just like a mention. Her death is a mention of passing. Here, Aaron is dead, and all Israel mourns for 30 days, an entire month long. Kind of fascinating. You know, we're, we're moving on up into the last few chapters. And uh, we're going to learn about all the kings that get defeated. And then uh, the first stumbling blocks thrown at the entire nation of Israel as they're going through all these nations. It, uh, it's going to be quite the study. Studies. Because we're only doing two chapters a setting. Okay, everybody, if this has been helpful for you, like, share, subscribe. Ring the bell thingy. ding a ling a ling Okay. Have a good rest of your day of rest. Love you all. Bye.